Um, uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak to you. Look, I, um, I gave a lot of thought to this before I came and I've actually written things down so I don't go over time because um, my students used to say I gave sermons rather than speeches, so I've got to be careful. What, um, there's been a reference to a couple of documents. One I brought with me that I would like to show you. You can find this on the Red Cross uh, website. It's called um, uh, Lessons Learned by Community Recovery Committees of the 2009 Bushfires. If you put in Lessons Learned and Community, um, it'll probably come up. Um, lots of things have been forgotten about what happened in 2009 and what we did learn. This, this remains a good um, synthesis of that. Um, I'd lo also like to say that um, uh, Rob Gordon's synthesis, again, is profound. Uh, Rob got our community through, um, through many issues over, over the, the four years or so of our existence. Um, with presentations like that that helped us to understand um, what we were, were going through. Now, I've got a little disclaimer. As I speak, often you will hear the emotion rise in my voice. I'm all right. I don't need counselling. I, I get debriefed and whatever, but it's just there, and I hope you're comfortable with it. I am. just depends on, um, on, on um, which, which part I'm talking about. So I want to tell you what happened to us in uh, Strathewan on Black Saturday and how our community uh, responded. And then if you come to the training, I'll, we'll talk about this is how we went about it, this is what we did, here was our activities and so on. So I'm going to tell you about how... how and this isn't about league tables of, of devastation. However, I want you to, to get a sense of how our, our community was left. Strathewan was incinerated by the firestorm that swept across from Kilmore, across Mount Disappointment, over um, uh, Sugarloaf and down into our valley. Um, we're a small community of about 220 people, about 130 homes. Um, it was horrific. 27 people closely connected or living in the community died on that day. 85 out of 130 homes were destroyed, along with the public hall, much loved, and the primary school, much loved. 100-year-old buildings, everyone had been, you know, through those kids and grandchildren and all the rest of it. So <clears throat> we lost our homes our history, those cherished buildings, the bush and the animals, which people love. So there's that, that whole thing was gone. Now, Strathewan received no warnings and there was very little organised support during the week that followed. And the area became inaccessible because it was shut down as a crime scene. So people were in shock, traumatised, grief-stricken, and there was a lot of anger. Our anger came pretty early. There was a strong sense that those in authority had let people down, but also that they didn't really know what they were doing. The media and the relief effort, and you may remember this, they were focused on uh, King Lake and Marysville. Um, and often, authorities didn't even know where Strathewan was. It didn't appear on some of their maps. They'd, when you'd say it, they'd say, where the hell's that? Um, and so there was an overwhelming sense that, um, that Strathewan didn't matter. It had, just, it had been forgotten. There were official meetings convened away from Strathewan because you couldn't do it inside because it was locked down. And they were a disaster. They were characterised by that anger, frustration, the loud people getting louder, which you may have experienced already, and the sensitive and the damaged people withdrawing, and no one really seemed to be listening. Um, so if a council person got up there, what people are thinking is it was their trees, it's their environment policy, who's going to listen to them? 
and if it was the CFA, it was they we didn't get a warning. Who's you know? So it was it was a terrible. They were terrible meetings. Then, as Strathewan's story got taken up because it was a pretty compelling story, um, we became increasingly concerned with the response from politicians and and those in authority who began announcing our future to the world without any consultation. Um, some of the surviving community leaders, because a number died, and recently arrived types like me, we met and agreed that we needed to assert a community voice and stop the damage. And I didn't look at how long this took, but it was a, it was a while after what was after the event. We knew from the public meetings that it'd have to be done really carefully or we'd end up tearing ourselves apart. And Rob's um, uh, slides, I think, uh, are a, a great example of the position we were in. Um, in other places, wise people and sometimes loud people managed to get themselves nominated to or selected onto, some self-selected, on, onto community recovery committees. And we knew that from what we'd seen already, if anything like that happened in Strathewan, we, we would tear ourselves apart. We needed something much more democratic. So we'd had incorporated associations through the community-owned public hall and through our land care group, and we were comfortable largely with that mechanism. We knew it'd, it'd have legal standing, it would have accountability to its members and not to other people. Um, and it would enable us to gather charitable funds and manage them on behalf of the community. And it would provide legitimacy to go and negotiate with, with all those different levels of government. So we put the proposal before 80 people on an unburned um, bit of land in Strathewan. And that act itself was symbolic because it, it, it felt like we were coming, we were coming back to our, our community. Um, it was supported unanimously and nominations were called for people who wanted to be on the, the, the steering group to, um, to get the rules. 35 people put their hands up. So we decided that we would we drafted together. It's about the most efficient, inefficient thing I've ever been involved in. <laughs> but, but we knew the only way to build trust is for everyone to see what's going on and if they want to have their say, they'll need to have it and we'll have to do it together. Um, our second test of inclusion was when we worked out our membership. We agreed that bereaved families, um, their members, could belong. And then we thought, well, past residents, they can belong. And then we thought, no, look, anyone who's got an affinity with Strathewan can belong. So that, was our, that second test of inclusion pushed us towards being really good people. It took us four weeks, six meetings, um, for, for writing those rules. And then we had 22 people stand for 12 positions. And remember, there's only about you know, 100 and whatever it was, uh, 180 people um, actually left in Strathewan and lots of those are kids. Um, the election was run through the Shire um, and we got the Australian Electoral Commission to, uh, to supervise it. Completely unnecessary, all of that. But we did it because we wanted to keep building the trust. This is, this is good, this is right, we're, we're doing all the right stuff. And that, was, that process was how we got to know one another and, and come to believe that we could work out any obstacles. We ended up with a committee that was a good reflection of the community. We had a good spread of ages. Sensible people voted for, for that spread of ages. We had wide skills and knowledge. We had communicators and connectors. We had doers and thinkers. Um, we had people who'd lost their homes and people who'd lost their family members. And we didn't achieve gender balance, but we had three really strong women. And so we were set up and ready to go. 
Our first meeting, we made the decision that we wouldn't get involved in relief. That relief was, there were lots of people doing that. We were going to try and focus beyond, into the future, and we were going to try and hold our community together. So for us, our association was, it was based on these democratic principles. It had broad participation, collaboration, partnership and reconnecting the, uh, the community as, as the foundations. Our first meeting was the 28th of June. So it took us five months. Don't get, don't get pushed by other people's timelines. We, we took time. We, we formed as the Strathewan Community Renewal Association. We bristled at the notion that we were only going to do recovery. And I um, thank Rob again for, for his comments. We'd identified that we had to do more. It was about renewal as the goal. Um, and I think we've actually achieved it. If you come along to our training session, I'll tell you more about how we do it. If you want to know more about us, we do have a website. Um, it doesn't have a huge amount of stuff on it. We've got a bit slack with that. But you can, you can find on it an archive of our newsletters. You can find on it our incorporated rules and so on. Um, and uh, if, um, if you want to send me an email, um, I'll, I can send you stuff as well. My email's wdh12 at bigpond.com. Um, and uh, obviously, you can get in touch with, with Kath. She'll pass it on too. Thank you.